Good evening. The Lord be with you this, the first Wednesday in Advent. Uh, also, uh, the color red for this, more, or this evening uh, because of the Feast of St. Andrew, which is also today. And so we will be celebrating his feast day. He was the first apostle called. That's why he's also the first apostle and first feast day of the new church year. The order of service is divine service setting three. We will speak the service, uh, all its parts. Uh, particularly, remember, and I forgot to do this in the bulletin, the glory in excelsis is omitted during the season of Advent and Lent, and so we will not be singing that. We'll return to that song uh, of the angels on Christmas Eve um, and Christmas morning. When we get to the intro, it, uh, I will speak that out loud uh, uh, by myself, and then we will speak the Gloria Patri as part of the intro, it, not what is in the, bullet, in, the, in the hymnal. So everything else is as printed in the bulletin. So we begin with our opening hymn, By All Your Saints in Warfare, seven, or 517, stanzas 1, 5, and 3. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O 
O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and just deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face who exult in your name all the day, and in your righteousness are exalted. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your grace, the Apostle Andrew obeyed the call of your Son to be a disciple. Grant us also to follow the same Lord Jesus Christ in heart and life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament for the Feast of St. Andrew the Apostle is written in the prophet Ezekiel, the third chapter. At the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whatever you he whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked ways, in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die for his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness and from his wicked ways, he shall die for his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. Again, if a righteous person turns from his righteousness and commits injustice, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you have not warned him, he shall die for his sin, and his righteous deeds that he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the righteous person not to sin, and he does not sin, you shall surely live because he took warning, and you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The epistle is written in St. Paul's letter to the church in Rome, the 10th chapter. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, 
he will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without, anyone, without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing from the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples. And he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was after the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What honor there is in being first. St. Andrew, brother of St. Peter, was first among the apostles called to follow Jesus. And more than that, he was first to believe. According to St. John the Evangelist, it was Andrew, a disciple of John the Baptist at the time, that first believed Jesus to be the Lamb of God. He followed the finger and the proclamation of John toward the one who must increase. Andrew then, in turn, introduced St. Peter to Jesus. And he introduced him as the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One. This introduction would change everything. It would lead Jesus to get in Peter's boat to preach. Then the word of creation in the flesh, Jesus, would create a miraculous catch of fish. In terror of conscience, Peter would confess, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Little did he realize, little did any of them realize, that the first fish among men caught were themselves. They would flop about with Jesus, struggling to get, to get used to breathing the new air, the new air of the gospel. In the end, they would learn to breathe. They would come to catch men, just as they were caught, with the gospel net of Jesus' wonderful works, Jesus' own suffering, death, and resurrection. For Andrew the first, for Andrew the first, the faith that was created and sustained in him through the preaching and teaching of John the Baptist and then Jesus himself was profound for one reason and one reason only. It took Jesus and made him his savior. Andrew's faith looked to Jesus and listened to him. That was the power of John's preaching he pointed to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And when the eyes and ears of faith turn from Jesus, that's when things go horribly awry. Andrew would not always be so resolute and faithful to Jesus. When the heavy, bewildering preaching of Jesus on Monday, Thursday converged with the mob armed with clubs, torches, and a betrayer's kiss. Their gaze was broken. The idol of life and limb required immediate sacrifice. And so Jesus would be left alone, left to suffer and die by himself. The sheep, including Andrew, scattered as the shepherd is struck, fear of his own death made him a liar and a betrayer of the very Lamb of God, the Messiah, who had come to save them all, including Andrew. The first to be called is also among those first to turn their backs on Jesus. So much love, so much grace and mercy received, yet in a moment all is lost. The pain of their betrayal, their abandonment, were as a millstone on the neck of Jesus. They wounded deeper than any thorns or nails. The shame of being alone and naked. Jesus was shown to be a nobody. Look at his people. They are gone. Yet it had to be this way. For the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame. For on his cross, Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Messiah, was every, is what everyone needed. On him, all sin is thrust by the priest who convinced the horde to cry out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Like a sheep, before the shearers is silence, he willingly goes to the altar of the cross. He does it for Barabbas, and he does it for Andrew, Peter, Judas himself, and for you. Jesus dies for those who did not care, who never cared, and who even would abandon him. Those who promised 
to never leave them, to even die. Those who vowed before God and man to fear, love, and trust in Him above all things, who promised to die rather than turn away and deny Him. Yes, Jesus died for everyone. The saints of God that we celebrate here on Wednesday night throughout the church here are no different than us. They're called to be apostles with such that it seems Jesus picked them precisely because they were such losers. One might make the argument that they were even worse than the rest of us. Even though we likely would have done the same thing to Jesus, abandoning him for our own lives, we didn't because we weren't then. We weren't chosen at that time. They were, though. They were chosen by Jesus in the flesh. And because they were with Jesus, face to face, hearing his actual words, the words of God, they proved to be greater sinners than the rest of us. Our own sin and betrayals are indeed great. They burden our consciences greatly. And more than that, they are the damnable weight borne on Jesus' shoulders. We know that our plight is eternally grave, and we do so much to avoid it. Things that are akin to the betrayal of the apostles. We, like them, turn our eyes from Jesus to anything and everything else for even just a moment of relief from the terrors of our return to the dust from which we were created. And so we falsely worship ourselves. We run and hide from Jesus to the creation, to the fallen darkness. Our sins, our broken promises, our apathy, they are our unbelief. And so with the apostles, the apostles in front of us, in the, the sinner's line, we look at them and we see we see them in front of us, and we see a great mystery. For we behold in them the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As bad as they are, we expect to see certain shadows and darkness. But we behold something that isn't right. As we peer at them in front of us, our eyes are forced to refocus. Our view is obscured. And we cannot see them as we would expect. The shadows, the depths of their sin disappears. There are no shadows, not even a wrinkle on their face to be seen. They are all aglow. A halo of light envelops them. It isn't natural. It is a sight to behold. It changes us. But we can't quite put our finger we can't put our finger on it by ourselves. It must be revealed to us why it is that they look like this. We must be it must be revealed to us, pointed out to us like with a sticky finger, covered with the remnants of locusts. Behold, the Lamb of God. What we behold... What we behold in the saints of the church are sinners for whom Jesus died. And so when we look at them, we do not see them as they are, but as God made them to be in himself, in Jesus Christ. They are donned with halos because they are covered with the eternal light of God. Jesus shines on them, in them. For they no longer live, but Christ lives in them. Their faith grabs hold of him. His bloody forgiveness washes out all shadow, all darkness. What we see in them are sinners transfigured by Jesus. Not those who made themselves better on their own. No, they couldn't do that. For remember, they ran into the darkness the night that Jesus was betrayed. No, Jesus had to come to them and come to them with his own light from the cross. 
For the way that Jesus walked was into the darkness after them, as a Savior would do. No other lights could assist that great event. The sun and moon would bow out in reverence to his glory that Good Friday. They would shine no more that day. No, he went after those saints alone, as only he could, as the very sacrificial lamb, the Messiah, the anointed one. He was anointed to do it. He would be sacrificed. The light would be swallowed up by the grave, by, the, by death, by the darkness. But the darkness did not win. The sealed tomb could not contain its creator. It is finished. The greater, let there be light, shines with those words, and it penetrates its beams outward for all to behold, for all to receive its comforting rays. If the saints of old now glow with Christ's glory, how much more you who are sainted by water and word, called from darkness and clothed with the light of Christ's forgiveness. Yes, you are saints of greater degree, as you have not seen, yet have believed, believed by the Spirit and His Word, who has called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified you by the gospel of Jesus Christ. The faith you have, you have received through holy baptism, and the words numbered, the words that you have heard number you among the saints. You are numbered among those who are made holy, holy by the Holy One, Jesus Christ himself. Saint Andrew, like the other apostles except for John, was martyred for his faith, the very gift given to him by Jesus. He would be honored to suffer for the sake of the gospel because of the very suffering of Jesus that purchased it, that redeemed him, he was willing to be martyred. Andrew, however, would not be nailed to his cross, but bound to a cross and would die by exposure. And like his brother Peter, who also was crucified, he would confess his unworthiness and his complete dependence on the grace and mercy of God in Jesus Christ all the way to the end. And so he would request that he would not be crucified as his Lord. Not on the same cross, but on one that is the shape of an X. And because of this, his death on that X-shaped cross, it bears his name, St. Andrew's Cross. His blood, his life, which was given to him, was entirely because of Jesus and his cross. Andrew's martyrdom added nothing to the salvation accomplished by Jesus. But it does confess. And it encourages. It encourages you and me in our lives to listen. To listen and look to, look to Jesus. To follow him, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world on his cross cross that is sufficient alone in itself. No, we are strengthened by these saints who are martyred, including St. Andrew. We are strengthened by their example and their confession to follow him, even unto death, to follow Jesus. For because of Jesus' death, our death is nothing to fear. Because of Jesus, even though we die, yet shall we live. Andrew knew this, and he believed it. And it was accounted to him, then, as righteousness. We will be raised from the dead, from the grave, if we were to die this night for the faith. Even if we die in the faith, in our sleep, the same is true. In the end, it's all because of Jesus. Because Jesus is not dead, he is alive, and he has guaranteed in the holy waters of baptism to raise us to new life, 
on the last day. That is our certain hope. And because of Jesus, sin, death, and the devil are no more to be afraid. And so this night, behold the Lamb of God for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. We rise for prayer. Let us pray. O Lord, King of heaven and earth, the only wise God, to whom be all honor and glory, we thank thee for all thy manifold mercies, but chiefly for the gift of thy Son, Jesus Christ whom thou didst send to declare thy word and to manifest thy love by taking upon himself the likeness of sinful flesh and becoming obedient unto death. Grant us the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that with our one heart and one soul we may come unto thee now in prayer. We are especially mindful this day of the great goodness in the calling and ministry of thy blessed Apostle Andrew, who by the effectual working of thy power gave ready acceptance to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, followed him steadfastly in faith and obedience, forsook all worldly advantage, and served him with glad heart as a fisher of men. Give unto us, O Father, a like faith, knowledge, and zeal, let thy spirit and word come unto us. Grant that we may drink deeply of the fountain of living water, so that there may be in us wells springing up into everlasting life. Help us to love, obey, and serve thy Son with all our hearts, and enjoy to lead others to him who is the salvation of the world. And as thou wilt have all men to be saved, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Stir up thy church, O Lord, that she may send forth to the far corners of the earth workers who are wholly dedicated to the sowing of thy word and the gathering of thy harvest, and grant that she may ardently pray thy blessing upon their labors and liberally give of her substance for their maintenance and su support. We, we beseech thy blessing upon all in authority in every nation. By thy, by thy spirit, enable them to rule with wisdom and mercy, so that men everywhere may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, and that thy people may serve and worship thee in the name of Jesus without fear of persecution or oppression. Send forth into our land the healthful spirit of thy truth, that multitudes now in darkness may renounce the works of wickedness and come to the joy of faith and hope 
in thy Son. Open our eyes to see that thou alone art our shield and buckler, and that thou dost continually overshadow us with thy power. Behold the needs and trials in our homes. Forgive the sins of thy people, and turn their hearts into the ways of, the, of kindness, understanding, self-discipline, patience, and purity. Let thy holy angel have charge over our children, and grant unto the parents a spirit of thanksgiving, prayerfulness, and contentment. Like gentle dew from heaven, let thy loving kindness fall upon the sick, the hurt, and the wounded, and deliver them out of all their afflictions. Strengthen thou in temptation or tri those in trial or temptation, and protect all who are in danger. We call upon thee, O God, and pray that thou wouldest hear and grant these and such unspoken petitions as are according to thy will. For the sake of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, for you have mightily governed and protected your holy church, in which the blessed apostles and evangelists proclaimed your divine and saving gospel. Therefore, with patriarchs and prophets, apostles and evangelists, with your servant, St. Andrew, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen.
sin in the world. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptismal grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptismal grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptismal grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come. Depart in God's peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 Lord bless you and keep you in your baptismal grace. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptismal grace. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. Christ shed for you. The blood of 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 Christ shed for you. Now the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come. We bow to God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. God who takes away the sin of the world. The body of Christ gives for you. The body of Christ gives for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ gives for you. The body of Christ gives for you. The blood of Christ. Now the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come. We part in God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. We stand. Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to light the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people, Israel. Glory be to the Father. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and to be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. 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 Amen.
You may be seated. The Lord's blessings to you this evening. Uh,